Images can play two distinct roles in web design. They can be an important part of the content or they can be purely decorative. If they're an important part of the content, images should be inserted in the HTML, as in the Pacific Highway case study. Let's just scroll down a moment. This image of the elephant seals isn't there purely and simply for decoration. It's to show you what the elephant seals at that beach look like. And the same could be said if you've got, say, pictures of products or people in a website. They go in the HTML, but if you want something purely and simply for decoration, it should be added as a background image using CSS. Now, the Pacific Highway case study design doesn't actually include any background images, but for the purposes of this lesson, I'm going to show you how to add a background image to the header. So let's scroll back up to the header. And to work with background images, it's usually best to go into Live View, so click on Live View. I can't remember if I've got a style rule for the header, so I'm going to select highway.css in the Sources pane of the CSS Designer and use the search field to filter my selectors. Uh, the only rule that I've got that contains header is this group rule here, so that's no use to me. I'm going to clear the search field by clicking that little X and add a new selector. And the selector will be header. Background images are in the background section of the properties panes. It's this fourth icon here, background. And there is background image. URL is for a background image. So just click enter file path. That opens this field with a little icon alongside it. Click that icon and make sure you're in the site route images folder. Seagull ping is the image I'm going to use. Click OK. And wow, we've got seagulls galore. When you insert a background image, the browser automatically tiles it right across to fill the full width and height of the element. The way in which you control that is by using the background repeat property, which is down here. And let's just look at the options. One of them is repeat. That's the default. The next one is repeat X. If I select that, it repeats the image only across the X axis, in other words, horizontally. Repeat Y repeats along the Y axis, in other words, vertically. And this last one, no repeat, gives me just one image. By default, a background image is placed at the top left corner of its element. You can move it by using, yes, you've guessed it, the background position property. The background position property takes two values, and the default in the CSS designer is to use percentages. If I just start scrubbing this zero percentage here, watch what happens to my seagull. Whee! He's flying across. So scrubbing background position visually like this in Live View makes it very easy to choose exactly where you want your image to be. Let's continue moving him. And you can see that he goes behind the text, so it is genuinely a background image. You can also adjust the vertical position by changing the second value. So as I scrub, it moves down. And let's just see what happens if I change that to 50%. The center of the image is in the center of the header. So the percentage value applies not only to the element, it also applies to the image. And you can verify that by opening this menu here and choosing center instead. And it's in exactly the same position. But let's say you change that to pixels and we make it 50 pixels. The distance of 50 pixels is from the top of the image. So pixels are measured from the top left of the background image, whereas percentages refer both to the percentage of the element and the percentage of the background image. So to add decorative images to a web page, use the CSS background image property. By default, the images tile horizontally and vertically to fill the background of the element. But you can control this by setting the background repeat property. 
and you can use the background position property to control the position of the image. Background position takes two values. The first one controls the horizontal value and the second one controls the vertical position. Well, cute though Mr. Seagull is, I don't think I really want him in my page, so I'm just going to click the minus button to remove that header rule and say goodbye to Mr. Seagull.